Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain. And today we're going to be working on our basket. So uh, this is the basket that I've done so far. This is just the first fire. It's a square basket and I have it set up to do the other side. Um, and on top, I'm going to do um, forget-me-nots. If you don't have a square basket, there are a lot of things that you can put um, this on. First of all, you could put it on a border of a plate. You could put the two up at the top and the two roses at the bottom. That would be very pretty, I think. Um, you could also put it on a square box. You could put it on a, a, a square vase if you have one. So look around. I'm sure there are places, if not, just break it in half and use just the one um, a rose for your line drawing, if you're going to be using the line drawing. But if you're a beginner, you should know that you can get the free line drawing at paintandporcelain.com. Um, and um, I'll put the link up here too, if I get a minute. And this is the, the free line drawing. And then you take and get um, some kind of paper. Don't use carbon paper. It will leave marks and it's kind of tricky. You have to wipe it down and make sure it's not going to leave marks. And get Sorrel transfer paper. You can get this online. I probably through Amazon. I know Dick Blick carries it. And you put the dark side down. You put your tracing over the top. And you just tape it in place, wherever you're going to use it, and then trace. And it comes out like this. That's what the red is on here. And it will move as you paint. So if you want something that stays in place, that's where the Sharpie comes in and you trace over what you have there just so it doesn't move on you. But it's a great way to start. I'm using my number, um, this is like a number 10 or 12. It just depends. Um, this is um, a Sharf. Oh, it's a 12. It's a Sharf 12. And it, this, these are the kind that are called uh, quill brushes. I like the quill brushes to paint with because they're kind of the original um, China painting brush. And I think what I've found is that um, the quill brushes really make it smoother, I think, than the other brushes. Although I'm a big fan of the Sharf uh, metal ferrule brushes. And I have a whole set of those too, and I use those quite a bit. So to get started here, I'm going to use um, my light pink and I'm going to use a little American Beauty because that's one of my favorite darker pinks. It's Cheryl Meg. She explains everything about doing her roses. So one thing she does is she starts out with these little angular things in the middle of the roses and I have to tell you I kind of thought it was cool. She did three of them like that and see see how that does? It does here. I'm going to, well you can see how it does pretty well there and then she comes down and, of course, does the lower part of the rose just like the rest of us would. So here we are. And this is the lower part of the rose. This is what we call the bowl of the rose or the front of the rose, whatever you want to call it. Um, here we go. Let's do a little more here. And what I learned from her is the hardest part for me to get, I got all this around the sides. If you've seen my basic rows, you know that I don't have any problem setting up a rose. It's the part in the front where the petals start to fold down that I had a problem. And she has a very quick and easy um, way to do that. So I'm just going to build up a little more color on this side than I normally do. And then I'm going to go around to the back. And let me see how I can do this. Maybe the best thing is just to turn it right where it is. There we go. Yeah, this is not working real well. And uh, I pull up in the back, I pull up the light color and I pull it out to where I want it from the center. Okay, so that's what I've got so far. And then I'm going to go back and I'm loading my brush full load of pink side load of American Beauty. And on this side, I'm cutting them in like this. There's one, there's two. Here's three. Here's four across the bottom. This one I can kind of... And here. And you just, it's, it's a full load of pink and a side load of the darker pink. Okay, and I'm going to do it here. And because, I don't know if you can see, there's a line here. So this would be a little darker right in there. 
I'm going to pull that over like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing right here because there's a darker line there to set that off. Can you see how I did that? You put the darker paint down where the shadow is, and then you can just pull it away later like this. And you don't have to pull it completely away. Okay, and then on this side, I'm going to do here and here, and one more. A couple more here, coming down, and here. Okay, so that's my rose set up. Now I have to go through and do some cutting and, and uh, making the, the petals more obvious. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is go back. I'm going to let this set up. Um, and I'm going to take my light green. You can use any light green and my middle green, warm brown green in this case. And I'm just going to start doing my, my uh, leaves. Now, I come into the rose with the leaf to kind of show that it's going behind it. And then I come across then I flip it around and I just do the end of the leaf. Okay, so let me show you that on a big tile here so that you can see what I did. Okay, so here's a big tile. We're going to take a light green, full load. So you take a light green full load like this. This is a full load. Side load. That's a side load, little C's that you make into the darker green. And you're going to come from here to the middle. And if you stop there, it automatically forms the vein for the middle. And from there to the edge, flip it around and then do, it's, it's like a backward C stroke right here. And that will give you a rose leaf. Very simple rose leaf. Okay, so going back to what we're working on. All righty, I'm going to clean my brush. Add a little oil to it and pat it. And now I'm going to go into some other colors that I have another light green here. You can switch up your light greens to give you some variety. Coming down here, down there. Flipping it around and coming to the end and doing just the end. Got it? Okay. And this one down here is a, is a petal too. I mean a leaf too. I'm coming this way. This way. Oops, don't have a lot of dark on there, do I? Ah. I don't care for that. That's getting all mucky. Hang on. Okay. So I'll go here and here. Flip it around and just do the end. Okay. And I can pull this down a little bit there. Okay, I have another leaf over here. I'm going to do it. The reason I'm doing the leaves is because it sets off. I'm even going to put a little green right here. I may not make a leaf out of it, but just indicate a leaf. And then I'm going to do a leaf right here and flip it around. Oh, am I in the here? Flip it around. And then up in here, I'm just going to suggest leaves, suggest a little color. And the reason for that is I want it at least, oops, that's a little dark. I want it at least to have some background so that when I cut out my roses, you'll be able to see them and see kind of what they do. See on this side, I did the same thing. I just did some color up in there. So that's what I'm doing up in here. Well, I had a second leaf down here. Let's put a second leaf down here. Okay, I'm gonna put a second leaf right here. I'm trying to make 
the two sides similar. They will never be identical, <laughs> but I'm trying to make them similar. Stop right there, there, and bring this guy out, okay. Alrighty, so now I've let my rose set up a little as uh, I just have turpentine on here. Let me show you what I did. I took the turpentine. I just tap my brush against the sides so that I don't go down to the bottom because then you get all the gook. And when I pat it off on my towel, I pat it off really well. Use my finger. I usually go both sides when I'm trying to do cutouts because I want to make sure that there's absolutely no more turpentine on there. Like I said, this will not work. At least it didn't work for me for mineral spirits or turpenoid, but it does work for turpentine and I'm always amazed. So the first cut I'm going to make is up here. I'm just going to come, come down that way and you wipe off in between each cut. I'm going to come down that way because you can almost see that that's right there, right? And then I'm gonna push up a little there. And then you're gonna go up here and you're gonna start cutting. And you're gonna cut, by cutting I mean just making these wedgie marks. You're gonna go this way. No, oh, hang on, gotta do my brush again. Okay, now you can do this with an eraser if you want. In fact, up there I think, or a, a stub, stump. These are stumps, they're these cardboard things. And you can just do it with them too, see? In fact, in this case, it's probably easier to do that. And do one, maybe one down in there. And then you're gonna do a couple up in here. And maybe one here. And one here, here. Now you're gonna start coming down the side. You're gonna do one here. And one comes out here and comes in. You're gonna do one here and one here. Mine are getting a little too um, thick, so I'm, I'm trying to stand up on the end of it. Here, here, and here, here, and here. Can you see what I'm doing? Do you get, do you understand what I'm doing? Okay, and then here, this guy's underneath, so I'm not gonna come over and do him there. I'm gonna do this guy there. This one's underneath, so I'm just gonna do this. And I wanna make the end of him curl up. So I'm gonna take my brush, this is what I learned, and just do that and it'll help curl it up. Okay, now I'm going to put a little oil on my brush, a little pink, and I'm just going to take and feather these little guys here so that we don't have those harsh lines because you don't want the harsh lines if you can help it. I find a lot of times that if I feather across the petal, going across this way instead of going to the edge and coming back, although sometimes that works, um, it, it also seems to help make the petal look better. Now I'm gonna go in the middle and do these guys here. These are the ones that fold down in front. These are the ones I could never understand. So let's see if it'll do it for me. I'm going to put one right here. And all I'm doing is pushing. And one right here. And might put, let's get that there. I might put one there and one there. And see how they're folding down in front now? Isn't that cool? And then you can go in, take a little bit of your darker color and just, oh, I need a little oil. Take a little bit of your darker color and just make that guy curl over a little, make that guy curl over a little. And then you're gonna, on the back of your brush, you're gonna just use your fingers and just very gently pull it. Now I think, I see this as being one petal there, so I think I kinda of like that better. Yep. And I might go back in and just make these a little darker. There we go. 
Mm, too much paint on there. Hang on. Okay. So what does that look like to you? Yeah, you can see it. It's getting there. I guess down here, I would kind of make that more of a bowl, less of a cut. Wait a minute, I don't like this guy. I'm going to get rid of him entirely. And this one should go like this. There. And I'm going to pull this up. So that's that rose. Now we have to do the petals over here. And of course I messed these guys up a little, but I can do that later. Now remember, this is the first fire. You can fix a lot of the things that you may feel need to be fixed. I'm using my darker green and just doing the base here. This is my liner or my scroller, whichever you want to call it. And I'm going to do this here. Nope. Oh, come here, baby. Do that there. And do this here. Now, the leaves are easy. I'm just going to take a small brush. Mm -hmm. For me, this is a small brush. This is a quarter inch. And I'm just going to do a real quick with a dark Oops, can you see what I'm doing? There we go. I'm just using the dark. I'm just suggesting leaves. These are so tiny. They're way out on the edge. They don't need to be much more than that. And then I need to paint in my rose bud. I'm going to do a full rose pink here. Full pink. Yep, yep, yep. Maybe come out that way a little bit. And then I'm going to take my dark pink and do the center of it. Then I will take my scroller. And I'm going to do the sides here. These are the, I forget what they're called. Am I still in? Yeah, you can see. Okay. Oh, it's too much on there. If you want to put um, thorns on, you just hold it like that, go back and forth, and pull out. Uh, probably would work better with my um, my smallest brush. Yeah, th these I think are a little thick, so I'm just going to take my stump and narrow them up, and there you have your thorns. These guys, I need to sharpen them up. I need to sharpen this one up a little bit. And this went up a little bit, but we'll get there. And remember, this is just a, f a first fire. So now on this side, this was the first fire. I like it. I may leave it. So I don't know. I may like this and I may leave this too. I don't know. It kind of depends. You can play all you want with the edges like this. If you want, you can even fold over one. A little bit like that and then just put a little bit of dark behind it like this um, is it in yeah you know you can do that but um, it's entirely it's entirely up to you how you place this you want to make sure though that whatever is on top is lighter the darker stuff fades to the back the lighter stuff comes to the front okay that's what you want and let's do the um, forget-me-nots on top. I didn't give you the um, study for this because I don't think you need it. Quite frankly, there's nothing much to a forget-me-not. You just need a tiny brush. Um, this is my number two. Very itty-bitty. Let me get this in here. Um, 
Oh, there we go. Okay. And, oops, it's got a lot of green on it. This is for the flowers. So I used two blues. Oh, I forgot to mention blue, but you would need a light blue and maybe a dark blue if you want to do these. Um, the light blue, I have a real pretty celestial blue that I like, but you don't have to use that. You can use baby blue. Baby blue works great. Copenhagen works great. So you could do baby blue and Copenhagen. Uh, for me, those were my basic colors when I first started painting. I was only allowed to have certain colors because I had to learn how to use them. And you just do... Nope. I might have to do the baby blue because this blue isn't showing up. And you just do the little... You have one, two, three, four, five. Now for beginners, this is what I would do. I would just do the color like this. One, two... This is one color, this is just baby blue. Three, can you see there? Yep. Four, five, and then I would go back in and get, let me use my uh, blue black, uh, of course, my favorite color. So your Copenhagen, your blue black, and I would just do the side that's in shade. So there's one side that's in shade you side load in order to get the blue black on. This is another one that's in shade. And you want a little shade at the bottom. A little shade there. Am I still okay? Yeah. A little shade here. And a little shade here. Or if you're a beginner and you want to do these, you can also just do, take your light blue, like I did here, put it on your guys, oops, not that hard. Put it on your guys here, one, two, three, four, five. Now these two should be a little bit darker, so I would put a little dark blue on there because they should be a little behind this guy. Um, Harder, the smaller stuff is actually harder to paint. Huh. And then you could take a stump, you could take a pointed Q-tip, I don't have any right now, and just wipe out a little bit of, just touch it and you'll wipe out a little bit of, of um, light on the page. And this one, I took out too much, so let me put a little more back there. There we go. Then I also have these little guys in the background. These are the fake ones. You can fake forget-me-nots like nobody's business. You just take your light blue and your dark blue, kind of mix them together and go like that, like that. And I'll show you some that aren't drawn in so you can see what I'm talking about. Then maybe one here. Just make it a, make it a a little, you know, a little petal, and another one right here. And they just give you the feel of a forget-me-not being there, but they aren't. Maybe one there, maybe one here. And it'll fill in around that to give you more of a feel of the, of the forget-me-nots. There we go. And then you're going to take your brush. I guess this one's fine. I'm using a quarter-inch and you're gonna load it with green, your light green, and you're gonna side load it with warm brown green. Now, these are not the length that they normally are. Uh, your leaves will not be the length that they normally are in a forget-me-not. You have to have artistic license on some of your things because they're on a piece that's a little smaller and you have to make them somewhat proportional, but the leaves are the same way. You come to the middle, come to the side, and then do the end. Come down and just do the end because they aren't going to be that long they're, but they're longer than the rose leaves and they're narrower than the rose leaves here's one here i'll do it come across put a little back into your flower so that it's under your flower and then just pull it on the end like this ba -ba. and then one more 
I have one more right here. Let me get a more dark color. Alrighty. Then you're going to take your liner or your scroller and you're going to do these little thingies. Mew, mew, mew. Oh, too much there. If you have turpentine, you can dip it in the turpentine and then dip it in the um, the oil that you use, and um, that really helps. Okay, um, it's spread a little better. And then I'm just going to do these little guys. Now I'm using my micro brush. That's this little guy. It's like four strands. It's very tiny, and I'm just going to pick up some blue. And I'm just going to do the, they're like buds. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to do them on this side too. One, oops. One, two, three, mm -hmm. four. Okay, and then this you can also use to give you a little more depth to some of your flowers if you want. You can even use this small brush to add the vein down the middle. Oops, that was a little clumsy. There. Sometimes you can just pull from the paint that's right there already. There. On those. And then you'll fire it. And see, this one's not quite as cute, but you get the idea. So that's what, this is what this will look like when it's fired. And it'll have a and then I think what I'm going to do is put a blue band along the side here. So, so pick up those brushes, keep painting. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the program. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.